On Sunday, I began to talk to us on the grace for insight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And I told you that as a child of God, if you must enjoy grace for insight, if you will not struggle in life, if you will not grow in the dark, if you will not keep making mistakes, I told you that you need to cultivate a deliberate and strong. <clears throat> no, I told you that the person to work with is the Holy Spirit, right? Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we saw in that scripture, it said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He said, I will counsel you. He said, I will be your advisor. I would advise you. Hallelujah. And I told you, I said, when God becomes your advisor, it's not possible for you to fail in life. It's not possible for you to make mistakes. When God becomes your advisor, you cannot grope in the dark. You cannot walk in the darkness of confusion. It's not possible. It's not possible. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And we said that if we were going to walk in <clears throat> insight, uh, if we're going to function in insight this month, in the grace for insight, we said there were certain things that, oh, rather, we said that the spirit of insight would help us, would take us away from certain kind of misfortunes or remove us from certain kinds of frustration in life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We read that scripture in in Second Corinthians chapter one Corinthians chapter two verse nine or from verse seven we read it. One Corinthians chapter two from verse seven we read it. We 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 said that when we uh, Paul was speaking and he said <clears throat> But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So we speak the wisdom. And I told you, I said, as a child of God, when you are born again, you have come into Christ. Wisdom has come into your life. Because Christ is our what? Wisdom. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, when we speak, that means we don't speak any ordinary words. We don't just say anything because it feels good. When we open our mouth, that scripture says that the opening of my mouth is with wisdom. When you open your mouth, it's wisdom that comes out of it. And it says this wisdom is in a mystery. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Please, let's go to the next verse. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew. I told you, I said, if the devil understood that God's <laughs> plan was to use his in his, his, his plan, his plot against him, he wouldn't have done it. Hallelujah. Because he thought that what he was going to do was going to put God as a, at, a, at a disadvantage. Again, God won. Hallelujah. God used what he planned to use to bring a disadvantage, turned it around and made it a blessing. Say, for had they known had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He was busy looking for the seed of the woman to destroy. Because he felt if he destroys the seed of the woman, then he's free to continue to create havoc in the whole world and do as he pleased. But he forgot. He, he forgot that God is the only wise God. That's what the scripture calls him. The only what? Wise God. So, no matter how wise you think you are, when, when it comes to God, you are still not wise. Unless it is his wisdom that is at work in you. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that if he had known, if the devil had known, he wouldn't have tempered with what he did. But in crucifying Christ, God used the death of his son to bring many more sons. So, God beat him at his game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse, verse 9. It says, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. There are treasures in Christ. There are what? Treasures in Christ. 
things that the Lord himself has set out for you, his child. But you see, the same way other eyes have not seen or heard or known, if you remain ignorant of God's word, and if you do not sit in the place of commun uh, communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you would also not be able to see it. Even though he has prepared it. He said he prepared it for those who love him. It takes a deeper eye to see what God has prepared. It takes an ear that is sanctified and conditioned by the Spirit of God to hear it. It takes a mind that has been already taken over by the Spirit of God to be able to, you know, a heart that has been taken over by the Spirit of God to be able to, you know, to be able to, 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 to perceive it and know that these are the preparations of God for my life. These are the purposes, the plans of God set out for my life. These are the blessings of God that he has heaped for me. Glory to the name of Jesus. He said, but eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither had it entered the heart of man. The ordinary man has no understanding of what God has in store for you as his child. Verse 10. He said, but these things... For you to be able to hear it, see it, know it. He says, God has done what? Revealed it unto us by his what? Spirit. And I told us on Sunday, I said the person to get acquainted with is the Holy Ghost. He is the one who knows the mind of the Father. He's the one who can search it out. Say, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. I said they are treasures. They are treasures hidden in Christ. If you read the book of Colossians 1. He said, the, 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 the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are what? Hid in Christ. Hid in Christ. So for you to access the depths of God's um, the depth of what God has prepared for you as a child of God the depth of all that God has put together for you the person you need to function with is his spirit for you to be able to what access the treasures that are hidden in Christ Jesus for you to be able to access the, the greatness that God has put in Christ for you you have to be what? Conversant with the Holy Spirit. They are hid in Christ. God deposited them all in Christ Jesus. But you can only access them when you have come in contact fully with the Spirit of God. Mingled with His Spirit. Become one with Him. And He would unveil the heart of the Father to you. Because He will go into the deep recesses of the Father. And He will search them out. Those things you have been struggling for years on end. If you give the Holy Spirit chance, walk with him this month, he will search them out. You will discover that your 10 years, God would shrink it into one. Because those things you have been waiting for, planning, praying, crying, doing all manner of exercise to get in 10 years, he will give it to you in one. Because when the Holy Spirit steps in to do a thing, he doesn't prolong matters. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. And what happened? He doesn't wait. He doesn't say, let's, let's try to see how we can connect things. No, he just brings it forth. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Can we read Ephesians 1, please? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, please. Can we read it in the Amplified? For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's so important that you get insight this month. It's so important that you function by the spirit of insight this month. If you will get to understand the deep and intimate things of God. There are things that are in Christ Jesus. That until you have become. You have come to the place of intimacy with him. You can't get them. 
I repeat it again. I said there are things that are in Christ that until you come to that place of intimacy, deep intimacy with him, you cannot access them. He says, for I pray, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And he tries to tell us what it is. He says, of insight into mysteries and secrets. You want to know God's secrets. You want to come into his mysteries. You need insights to access them. And that's why Paul, Paul saw how important it was for a child of God not to grope in the dark. How important for a, it is for a child of God to walk in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel. The fullness of the blessings of Christ. He said, God, grant these people the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Cause them to have insight into mysteries and secrets. He says, these things will come in the deep and intimate knowledge of God. When you come to that place of knowledge, that is this month we are talking about. Where you access things that you, that when a human mind, when a human ears hear, hears it, it blows their mind. Look, let me tell you, there's so much in Christ. These things you see and you're saying seven wonders, eight wonders. It has not, you haven't really seen the wonders. When the Holy Ghost opens you up. To the heart of the father and causes you to see those deep things that are in the heart of the father for you the minds of the people that will see it will blow why because there are things that you cannot even imagine with your ordinary mind hallelujah it comes to play in the place of knowledge when you stay in that place of fellowship with the spirit of god he begins to open you up to certain things you discover that that connection you need, the Holy Spirit can tell you. He has all the connection in the world. That thing you have been struggling to learn, he can teach you. He's a better teacher. So why don't you take your time, sit with him this month and allow him school you. Allow him carry you into dimensions of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Allow the Holy Ghost carry you into those dimensions you cannot assess them by yourself that's why you need that time of deep and intimate relationship and fellowship with him because it is deep that calls out to deep is that not so is that not what the scripture, scripture said it said deep call it out to deep glory to the name of jesus i like us to just see something quickly before i go on in Exodus chapter 31 from verse 1. This month, the Holy Spirit is going to teach you things by himself. Things that when you come out and do it, people will be wondering where you learned it from. He will teach you if you would give him attention. That's why from the beginning we keep saying the person to get to is the Holy Ghost. The person to get acquainted with is the Holy Spirit. The person to talk to is the Holy Ghost. The person to fellowship with is the Holy Spirit. He said, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, God gave Moses assignment. He told Moses what he wanted Moses to do. Moses stood there and was wondering, God, who has ever created this kind of thing? <laughs> Nobody has done this kind of thing before. I'm sure in the mind of Moses, he was wondering, where are we going to even get this thing? All these kind of things God is telling us to do. God was telling, God showed this is a certain pattern and told Moses, this is how I want you to do everything. That Now Moses is standing there and wondering, how am I even going to do this thing that God says I should do? But look at it. Look at it. And the Lord said, can we go back please? Thank you. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, verse 2, See, I have called by name Bazalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. It takes insight for you to see. Do you understand? 
this moon, God has brought you into a place to, of seeing. That is why you need to have time. That's why you need to give the Holy Spirit all the time you can, all the time in the world for you to be able to see. Because if you can see, if you can see this month, you are made. I say, if you can see this month, you are made. He says, see, I have called by name Bazalil, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah. Verse two, 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. God said, me, I'm the one who trained him. I trained this man in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, in all manner of workmanship. Because Moses was wondering, God, how are we going to do this thing you are telling me to do? God knew he was contemplating in his heart. Where are we going to go and look for? How do we even start? How do we even do this thing? God said, hey, 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 see. See. This month, God wants you to see. That's why he's giving you what? Insight. He wants you to do what? See. A lot of us have been moving around. We are not seeing. We have eyes, but we are not seeing. It's time for you to begin to see so that you can locate that connection you have been looking for. Maybe it's just beside you and the person has been working with you for years. You don't know that that is the person you are supposed to have. The person that God has put that blessing in his hand is by your side, but you have not seen. You've been working with your eyes wide shut. That small thing in your house might be the business you need. To start and make them the biggest of all, you know, profits in life. And take the biggest of all harvests in life. But because you have not seen. So you look at that thing in your house, you despise it. You despise it because you do not have insight. You do not know that that little thing could have turned your life around. You know the, the story of the woman of Zarephath. Is that not so? The woman of Zarephath. She had... The bottle of oil in her house and she was crying to the man of god saying hey man of god i'm in trouble come to my aid come to my aid i'm in trouble the creditors they have come they want to take my son remember my husband he too was one of the sons of the prophet how can it be heard that the son of the prophet the one of the sons of the prophet his own sons have been taken into bondage where has it been heard that the sons of the prophet go into bondage he said, come to my head. What did Elisha say? What do you have in your house? It's time to begin to see you. Did you hear me? It's time to begin to see. The first place to start looking is inside. You are a bundle of treasure. You, you, yes, you, you are the one I'm talking about. You are a bundle of treasure. But you have so despised yourself that you don't think. Like Nathaniel will say, can anything, anything good come out of? <laughs> can anything, anything good come out of Nazareth? In you, God has packaged the best. But you have been despising yourself. And you have been failing to look into yourself. To bring out all that God has put inside of you. If you can bring out one tenth of what is inside of you, this world will not be able to contain it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you fellowship with the Holy Ghost, He will make you see things in you that nobody has ever seen before. And those things are going to be things that are useful, productive, and profitable. What did I say? There will be things that are what? Useful, productive, profitable. Look at this man. God said, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. That woman had oil in her house. She never thought that oil can, can become a source of finance for her. The man of God said, what do you have? I don't have anything. Is that not what she said? She said, she first of all dismissed the fact that that thing can be even useful. 
She said, man of God, I don't have anything except a small bottle of oil. What can I do, self? Small bottle of oil. <laughs> the man of God said, it's because you are not seeing. If you are seeing what I'm seeing, you will discover that that oil, that small bottle of oil can become a million bottle of oil. The man of God told her, I said, go to your house, close, you, borrow a vessel, not a few. The only time that you are permitted as a child of God to borrow <laughs> is when you want to multiply. Somebody didn't hear me. <laughs> the only time you are permitted to borrow is when you want to do what? Multiply. Because we don't have borrowers, we have what? Lenders. In this kingdom, we do what? We lend. We don't borrow. He said, close your door. When you have borrowed those vessels, close your door. Come into the place of intimate fellowship. Shut yourself out of against the wall. You know, don't, you don't need distraction in that kind of moment. That is the time you are in. A time when you get into your house, close your door. And fellowship with the Holy Ghost until everything that is inside of you be, become productive. Everything that is inside of you become profitable. Everything that is inside of you begin to multiply. Glory to the name of Jesus. And by the time she did it, the Bible said she went and sold it and made profit. Is that not so? Did she ever think that that small thing? If you would walk with the Holy Ghost today, he would teach you not to despise no matter how small that thing is because it will become useful. And it will produce results. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Next verse, please. He says, To devise cunning works, to walk in gold and in silver and in brass. Next verse. And in cutting of stones, to set them and in carving of timber, to walk in all manner of workmanship. Glory to the name of Jesus. God said, There's somebody have put this thing inside of him. <laughs> all that you need there's somebody have put what did he tell him to do he first of all told him to do what see see it is available but you've got to do what see it and you need insight to do what see without insight you cannot find out what God has in store for you that's why you are there, you have been looking for connection, you have paid money, plus money, plus money, plus money, but the connection has never come. This is Moses. God was connecting him. He needed connection to do what God wanted. God connected him by causing him to see. If God finished telling Moses, and Moses left there and said, okay, I don't know. Let me go and find. We will need to look for all the, we will need to go to all the nations of the world. Let's go to other nations and find out. He would not have discovered that inside his own house, God already arranged somebody. See, let me tell you, God will not send you on any journey he has not made preparations for. Did you hear what I said tonight? He will not. He will not send you. Whatever connection you are looking for in life, this month, God will connect you. He will connect you. And because he's bringing you to the place of knowledge this month, he will cause you to be skilled in things. If you will spend time in the presence of God with the Holy Ghost, like we said, you cultivate a, a strong desire, a deliberate walk with the Spirit of God and a strong desire for the presence of God, a strong desire for the right kind of atmosphere. If you bring the Holy Ghost into your atmosphere, the book of Job 20, 22 says, Acquaint now thyself with him. Now, the person you need to get in, get, get in love, become, be in love with, the person you need to get connected with, the person you need to mingle yourself with, he says, is him. He says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be what? At peace. Then good shall do what? Come to Good shall come to you. That's what the scripture says in the book of Job 22. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. 
And I told us on Sunday, I said, if we would, if we would enjoy, um, I told us on Sunday, I said that if we walk in, 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 uh, walk, if we want to enjoy insights this month, or if we would walk in it, I, I told us, I said that insight would take away stagnation and unfruitfulness. It will take away stagnation and unfruitfulness from your life. It will bring you to the place of consistent progress. And we saw that in the life of who? Isaac. We said Isaac sowed in the land. That same land where nobody could see anything good in. People were abandoning the place and they were running away. The Bible said God opened his eyes and he did sow in that land. He got a harvest that is 100, not 30, not 60. He got a hundredfold. He got a hundredfold. It means everything he planted, he didn't lose anyone. He didn't lose anyone. The Bible says the man became great. And he went forward. I told you, I said, he became great because he became prosperous. He became fruitful. And he was no longer stagnant because the greatness moved him forward. The greatness is what moved him forward. Hallelujah. And he said he went forward and he works great. He was great. He continued to become, to be great until he was so great that the Philistines what, envied him. When he had nothing, when he was struggling in that famine, nobody saw him. Did you see that? But the moment he grew, the moment he, he exploded with prosperity, everybody identified him that something has happened in the life of this man. Glory to God. We said it takes away frustrations and discouragements and keeps you constantly motivated. And I told you, I said, the only person that can keep you consistently motivated in life is the spirit of God. Because the Bible says that there's a spirit in man, the inspiration of the almighty giveth him understanding. I remember telling you on Sunday that when God unveils a matter to you, it's as good as what's solved. It's as good as that. Number three, I said, insight gives you the needed advantage in life over your competitors. When your enemy thinks he's planning, this is what we are going to do. We are going to go ahead of him. God gives you 10 steps ahead of him. I gave you that scripture in 2 Kings that talks about the king who, who called his people and said, there's a conspirator here. There's a, 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 somebody who has been sniffing around and telling stories. Somebody here somebody here has always gone to tell our enemies what we are planning and one of them said listen boss there's nobody like that we are loyal to you but there is a prophet there is a prophet in israel is there anything you say even in your bedchamber you will tell it to the king hallelujah so when you have insight it will set you it will give you advantage over your adversaries. Glory to the name of Jesus. Then I said to enjoy inside this month, one major factor that every one of us need to do is to cultivate that deliberate walk with the Holy Spirit, which is what we have been talking about since. And we said, if you would walk with him, if you would walk with him, there is no way you can be at a disadvantage. It's not possible. I gave you one advantage factor and i said it is to develop a strong desire for the right spiritual atmosphere is that not so i say when you hang around dead people and not be surrounded you can't hang about around dead people and not be surrounded with darkness i gave you that scripture in one two corinthians six it says what connection has christ with what Bilal. What concordance has light with darkness? What agreement do we have? You say I'm light, you are dark. And then you say we are friends. How is it possible? Light and darkness does not coexist. Hallelujah. It does not coexist. So you can't claim to be Christ. And yet everything that is around you looks like an infidel. Because it says you are Christ. The other one is Belial. Hallelujah. You are light. The other one is darkness. So you cannot claim to be Christ. But the things happening to you is things that happen to people in the dark. 
So I told us that first, Second Corinthians 13, 14 says, the fellowship of the Spirit, that is what you need this month. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. We say it every day. I ask you again, I say, do you really understand what you say when you say it? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the grace is available for you to do things. The love of God. Yeah, hallelujah. You are flowing in it. It's about the communion of the Holy Spirit. The communion. You must, I told you this month, make your intercourse with God intentional. Make your what? Make it intentional. Make it intentional. Your time of fellowship, make it intentional. Make it intentional. Don't stumble into the place of fellowship with God this month. Don't do it. If you stumble, you would only get results that people who stumble get. And people who stumble, what is the result? They fall. Oh, I said if you stumble into fellowship with God this month, you will only get the result of what people who stumble get. And people who stumble, their result is that they what? Fall. You don't want to fall in this season. You don't want to. So don't stumble into a place of fellowship with him. Don't stumble into the place of prayer. Don't stumble in the, in the place of studying the word of God. Don't stumble into a worship session with God. Be intentional with God this season. Be intentional with him. Be intentional with him. You want to walk in, 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 in by the spirit of insight this month. Be intentional with God. He told Moses, he said, see. You need to see. You know, we want to become that. See it. It's there. If you don't see, you cannot find. You cannot get into it. What did God tell Abraham? He said, look. As far as you can see, I give it to you. God is looking for one man who will see this month. He has so much he wants to release to you. But he's looking for that one who is prepared to see in the place of fellowship. To see in the place of prayer. To see in the place of worship. He's looking for that one man who is prepared to see. Are you prepared to see? Because if you are prepared to see, say as far as you can see is yours. God does not place limitation on his children when it comes to releasing his blessings to them. When it comes to releasing his abundance to them. He does not place any form of limitation. The only person who can place a limitation on what he can get from God is you. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two, give attention to the word of God. Through regular meditation. Give attention to the word of God through med regular meditation. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. I don't want to carry over this. Hallelujah. My son, attend to my words. Attend. Attend to my word. Incline thine ear unto my say. Hey, draw yourself. Bend your ear and hear what I'm saying. You want to function in insight. The way to get it is to attend to God's word. Give attention to the word of God. You know why? Because there are wondrous things stored in the word of God. Until you pay attention, you cannot get it. You cannot locate it. Psalm 119 verse 18. Psalm 119 verse 18. Say, open down mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Everything about your life is inside God's word. Until he opens your eyes, you cannot see how wonderful your life is. You cannot see how wonderful your life is. You see, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Until you give attention to the word. You will, not, you, you will not get to that point where your eyes is open for you to see the depths of the riches of the graces of God embedded in the word of God for you. There's so much there. No wonder the psalmist cried and said, open my eye. I want to see. Because a man who cannot see will not find his way. 
If you do not see, you can never find your way. It's only a man who has sight that can see where he's going to. Psalms 25 verse 14. Oh, I haven't mixed it up. Hallelujah. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will shew them his what? Covenant. Can we have it in a simpler translation? Maybe New King James or NLT. The Lord is a friend to those who fear. Okay. No, not this one. Um, New King James, if you have that. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. God wants to unveil to you his covenant. But you see, until you dive into that place where he says, we read from the book of 2 Corinthians 6, uh, 2 Corinthians 2. He told us, he says that Sorry, can you put back the scripture? I'm just making a reference. Put back the scripture that was there. Psalm 25, yeah. God told us that he is opening our eyes to see secrets and mysteries. Is that not so? secrets and mysteries and it says these secrets and these mysteries they are with those who fear god it is them that he will show his covenant it's only when you come to the place of fellowship and communion with him when you spend time with the word of god he begins to open unto you his covenant he opens the secrets the secret of all secrets to you he shows you the way to to rule the way to reign he put shows you the dimensions that you can take in him and flourish without limitation without reservation glory to the name of jesus john chapter 6 verse 63 it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the word that I speak to you are spirits and they are what? Life. They are spirits and they are life. Jesus said his words are what? Spirit. So if you would access the realm of the spirit, what do you need? The spirit. Is that not so? The word of God is spirit and is life. The word of God is spirit and is life. He said the word, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. In case you're on, you are still reasoning, you are still trying to dissect matters in your life using your senses. He says it will profit you what? Nothing. They say something is happening. You want to use your senses. You say, you know, 10 people died. Ah, you are calculating. If they say that pandemic is here now, if 10 people died yesterday, you are not calculating. Your mind, you are using your mind to dissect things. Or they tell you something about God. Instead of you to just accept it. That this is God's word. You want to use your sense. To interpret it. He said. It will profit you nothing. Because instead of you to get a headway. You will become even more confused. Yes. You will become more confused. Because your senses are limited. But when the Holy Ghost steps in. And you give him the right of way. To do things in your life, to rule, to access your faculties and use them for his glory. He says it will be life. Glory to the name of Jesus. So when you spend time with the word, the same way you spend time with the Holy Ghost, give him attention, give the word of God attention. Let me tell you, the word of God is the tool the Holy Spirit uses to work in your life. So if you are following you are looking for the holy spirit you are running after him but you don't have the word every time you say lord i want this he's saying give me the tools to work with give me the tools to work with is the word of god in your heart the word of god in your life the word of god that you have filled yourself with that is the tool that god is going to use to work in your life so if you have not been studying the scripture tells us in the book of 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study to show yourself approved unto God. 
Study to show yourself. You don't want to be ashamed in this season. Study. Spend time with the word of God. Give the Holy Ghost tools to work with in your life. Give him tools to work with. Stop giving him a hard time. When they say, I'm your child. It's I, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. I don't know whether you want him to pray for you. It's me, oh Lord. Not my mother, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. You think God does not know it's you? You think God does not know it's you? He knows it's you. You don't need to introduce yourself. You are his child. The moment you appeared, he saw it was the Conesophilia. So he, he does not make mistake. He will not see uh, Brother Jacob and say, is this Esau? <laughs> Voice of Jacob, hand of Esau. God is not Jacob. Uh, uh, God is not Isaac. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is not Isaac. He does not make mistake. He does not make mistake. He knows you like light at night and day. He knows you. Didn't he make you? He made you. Glory to God. He has given you the best thing that God gave to you in life is his word. Is his word. This month, eat the word of God. Eat it. Eat it. The psalmist said, I found your word and I ate them. He said, your word is sweet to me. It's better than my daily food. When I eat your word, I'm satisfied. It's better than me sitting down to eat um, chicken and chicken feet and pap. It's better. Some people, chicken feet and pap. Woo! That's the best thing. They cannot miss chicken feet. If you make them miss chicken feet and pap, they will become your enemy. You will correct. Let chicken feet and pap rest this month. Make the word of God your chicken feet and pap. Glory to the name of Jesus. Make the word of God your chicken feet and pap. Eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. The prophet said, I found your word. I ate them. They are sweet. Sweet. The word of God is sweet. And it is the tool the Holy Spirit needs. He would use the word to do anything. In your life. So give the word attention. You want to access the realm of the spirit? The word of God will open it up to you. Give it attention. Finally, develop a heart of meekness. Develop a heart of what? Mm, meekness. Very important. I cannot even overemphasize this one because our bishop has preached meekness. Taught meekness. Sang meekness. Meekness is a virtue. You cannot afford not to have as a child of God. Meekness means you bring yourself to a place where you receive instructions. It is only the humble person that takes instruction. It's only the humble person. A person who is not humble cannot be taught. Are you aware of that? The man thinks he knows everything. You are trying to correct, you cannot correct somebody who is not humble. You cannot teach somebody who is not, he's not teachable, he's not correctable. He feels he knows everything, yet he is an empty vessel making the loudest noise. It means, meekness means you bring yourself to the place where you receive instructions and discipline with gladness of heart. The Bible says, God will chastise the son who he loves. You, they cannot correct you. They correct you, leave church. They correct you, won't come for one month. They correct you, you won't even talk to the person who corrected you again. Are you for real? Is it the same Holy Spirit that is inside of you? This Holy Spirit that we love so much like this. Is it the same Holy Spirit that is in you? Anybody that cannot be corrected, hey, I'm uh, sorry for you. You are heading for destruction. I'm telling you. You are headed for destruction. You know, it's like eh, there's a blindfold on your eyes and you are just going, G -g 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 you will just fall into a pit because you don't like to be corrected. You don't know that it's a privilege and an honor to be corrected. Oh, you didn't know that it is a privilege and an honor to be corrected. That's why the Bible says God loves the son whom he chastises. He says, if God chastises you, it's because he loves you. If God keeps quiet, cry you. 
If God does not say anything, you are just living your life, God does not say anything, please start fasting and praying. Cry. Well, look for people to help you pray. Fast. Come to the altar. Don't leave and say, God, you haven't said anything. Because it means danger is looming. But when God speaks, it's because he loves you. When he uses any of his servants or he uses somebody who loves you, a brother in the church to correct you about something, don't get pissed. Don't get offended. Uh, it is only a vagabond and a bastard that does not take correction. Do you understand me? Somebody who has no rule over his life. Nobody can rule them. They think they have everything and know everything. Your life is an island. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Nothing will grow there. Because you will get to a point that even the Spirit of God will now become mm -hmm. see if I talk now. Mm -hmm. You say, Holy Spirit speaks. Mm -hmm. Because you have not been, every time he corrects you, you say, no, 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 that cannot be the Holy Spirit. I bind that voice. No, that must be the devil. Say, there is, the, the Spirit is telling me differently. That cannot be the Holy Ghost. So now the Holy Spirit has become tired of being rebuked. He keep quiet. When you say, Holy Spirit, speak. Mm, 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 mm. He keeps quiet. Because you cannot be taught. You cannot be corrected. Even when you are disciplined, you say, take it with gladness. That's meekness. Glory to the name of Jesus. I said that's meekness. Hallelujah. Let's see. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. Matthew 5 verse 5. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. The only people permitted to inherit this earth. The meek ones. So if you are not meek. Sorry for you. You that if they tell you. Eh. Sister Kiniko, why did you not do this thing? Eh? Didn't you know that this day? Then you get angry. You get angry, you become so furious. Me, I've asked the question before. I'm asking you again, is it the same Holy Ghost? This Holy Ghost? Is it the one controlling you? Because the rate of anger that flows in you, only Jesus can save. If you are not getting angry and tearing the ground, you are getting offended. And you say, let them take their church. It's the church of Jesus Christ too. It's not our church. It's the church of Jesus Christ. Me and you, we are called to enter. We are members, members of the body. Hallelujah. Um, Psalm 25 verse 9. That's a final scripture for the night. Psalm 25. He said, the meek will he guide in judgment. You want to be guided this month, ne? This month of insight. You want to be guided, ne? He says, the meek will he guide in judgment. Because the one who is not meek, the other person, he cannot tell him anything. You want God to say, no, don't take the left turn. The, this turn, go straight first, bend, then you take the right. You say, I've been following this road all the time. Don't I know where I'm going to? So, the meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. Every day, I want to know you more. Show me your way. God say, I want to show you the way. And I say, is it this way? Can't we take the other side? Yeah, you uh, uh, show me your way. I want to walk in it. Show me your way. God wakes you up at 5 a.m. Let's go now. I want to show you the way. Uh -uh. I haven't slept enough. Oh. Show me your way. In the morning, you wake up. Show me. You won't let people hear what. Show me your way. I want to walk in it. Show me your way. God now wants to show you the way you are, you are, you are resisting. You are resisting. See? It's only the meek he can teach his way. It's the meek he can guide in judgment. Can we see it in NLT, please? He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. You want to 
make judgment and your judgment is a right one this month. Be meek. Function in humility. He leads the humble in, in doing right. I think it's the NIV that says, he leads the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. In what is right. There's no way the spirit of insight, the, you, you can function in divine insight and be making mistake. Be making mistake. You do this one today, they say it's not good enough. You do it tomorrow, they say no, go and repeat it. Even as a student, you cannot have insight and fail exam. Are you hearing me? A businessman, you cannot make wrong business decision if you have divine insight. Because the spirit of God will teach you what business to do. Go and ask Isaac. Go and ask Isaac. The spirit of God will teach you. He would introduce you to businesses. You see those businesses, nobody thinks anything good can come out of. That's the one the Holy Spirit will introduce to you. And when you put it to work, you will flourish. People will be wondering, you mean it is that thing that he is doing that is pro prospering like this? Don't you think he's doing another thing, but the, the man is not doing anything by the side? He was listening to God. And he followed the instructions. That's why his life is like that. This month, the Lord would help you make choice, definite, productive business decisions in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, the Spirit of God will guide you in the right thing. In doing right. He will guide you to do right. He will teach you to do right. You will go to that class. You will not be making, taking the wrong answers in your exams anymore. When you get into the exam hall, you will do right. Because you would have worked with him all through your time of study. By the time he gets to the point where you need to deliver, you will deliver correctly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every form of connection you have been looking for. The Spirit of God will open your eyes to see. He will open your eyes to see that connection that is inside your house. He will open your eyes to see that connection that is by your side. He would open your eyes. A man of God talked to us about Hagar and the son Ishmael. When they went into the wilderness and there was no water. And she was crying for test because her son was about dying for, uh, out of test. The Bible says the spirit of God, the angel of God came and opened her eyes and caused her to see the well by her. Where was the well? By her side. A lot of us, we have that which will make us rich by our side. We still have not seen. Today, I pray for you. The spirit of God will open your eyes and cause you to see. He will cause you to see the well by your side that will produce increase for your life. They will produce prosperity for your life. They will produce abundance for your life. The Spirit of God will open your eyes to see it. In the name of Jesus, rise to your feet and lift up your hands and let's give God praise. Let's bring this service to a close. Let's give God praise. Give him honor. Worship his majesty. He is good. He is great. This month, declare, Lord, I will walk with you. I will be intentional in my walk with you.